three, two, one. Hello, my name is Vincenzo Rutigliano Diaz. I've been in this ministry for a year and a half. And today, I want to talk about something that relates a lot to what we're going through in this difficult moment. Sometimes when we go through hardship in the first time in our lives is during our youth. We start to experience difficulties that we didn't really see when we were children. We start growing up and see different angles of reality that we didn't see before. And this time of quarantine has been helpful for us to realize all of those things. There's a person that we can relate to in this moment who was called Carl Wojtyla. He was born in 1920. His mother conceived him in a time when Europe was recovering from a war and so the doctor also told her that she wouldn't be able to survive her birth, her son's birth, so her doctor advised her to have an abortion. Fortunately, she said no, that she wanted to have the baby until the end, and so this baby was born. This baby will grow up to become John Paul II. And so we see that from the beginning of our lives, even small decisions can lead to great change in history. Carol, as a young child, had a very normal life despite growing up in a destroyed continent. His country, Poland, was very targeted by other countries in that time. And when the Second World War broke up, uh, the part of the country that he lived in was invaded by the Nazis. And he was descendant from a Jewish family, so he was more targeted than ever. He had to uh, hide from the authorities and he had to like had a very tough paperwork until the end because he, they, they were pretty much being persecuted at every time of the day. He had passions as any kind of kid growing up in school, like he his dream job was to be an actor, he did some of that. And eventually he started realizing that there was something else in life that he was missing. He saw that there was something more inside of himself that he didn't see before. It was his spiritual side and he was starting thinking about the priesthood. He started feeling this call. And it was because of this difficult time that he was able to have time to think, to talk with his friends, like to appreciate every single part of his life, every part of his hard work, because he also had to work in the mines. Uh, for very low income and trying to help other people uh, he saw the best opportunity to help others through the priesthood he became so recognized by others in the seminary at some point the Nazis started persecuting priests in the seminary so they had to shut down and he left for Italy when he ended in the seminary he became bishop in a local town in Poland and he started becoming more and more recognized over the years because of his service, defending the people and defending the religious liberty in his country that was going through a dictatorship after the war. Eventually he was recognized by Pope Paul VI and he became a cardinal. He participated in the election of John Paul I who died 33 days in office and he decided and after the second election he became elected as Pope himself and then he decided that he wanted to continue that legacy, so he took the name John Paul II. During his papacy, John Paul II had the chance to visit all seven continents, and he was known all around the world for his desire of religious unity among all Christians. He established World Youth Day because he recognized that the youth was so important for the church because on us resides the legacy of a 2,000 years of history, and we need to start building that relationship with God and within the church from our young age because at this, is the, this is the time that we have the skills, these opportunities to start growing up in the faith so early to start building the church when we have the most physical strength, the most emotional skills. He became a symbol with Mother Teresa in the late 20th century of Christian unity, a good example of what a good Christian should be. However, not everyone was happy with all of his effort, and unfortunately, he suffered a terrorist attack on Vatican City. He recovered stronger than ever, and he was able to go to the jail that the assassin 
went and he talked to him, he was able to forgive him, and that was so moving for that mercenary that he himself converted to the faith because he couldn't understand how is that possible that someone that I try to kill is forgiving me and not only that but he's opening the doors for me in this way and that was so impactful for him that he converted because he saw that the only way that someone can forgive something like that is through God and that makes us remember that God's present with us all the time his example of survival is something that we can take because at this difficult time we need to remember that it doesn't matter how many difficulties we go through everything happens because God lets it happen for us to keep growing up to keep pushing to keep strengthening our faith and to keep spreading the gospel in the world and with John Paul II's example we hopefully will keep spreading the word of God to all the peoples of the earth. Please like and subscribe and share with all your friends that you think can benefit from this. Thank you so much.